This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Kia ora, welcome back to another roundup of news from the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. We're going to start today's show with some great news from Tesla, namely that it appears to have dramatically ramped up production for its 4680 form factor battery cells. While Tesla has remained extremely tight-lipped about exactly what its production rate is for said cells, it announced this week that it's just produced its 20 millionth 4680 form factor cell at its Texas Gigafactory, just 16 weeks after it hit the 10 millionth cell milestone. As Electrek rightly noted this week, that translates to a weekly volume of around 80 megawatt hours of cells, enough to produce 600 Tesla Cybertrucks a week, or a mixture of Tesla Semis, Tesla Model Ys, and Tesla Cybertrucks. It's further evidence that official production of the Tesla Cybertruck is just around the corner. Volkswagen confirmed this week that customers can now place pre-orders in select markets for the refreshed Volkswagen ID4 and, where sold, ID5. The two sibling models will come with a new improved infotainment system with a larger centre touchscreen and all new onboard software. While Volkswagen hasn't made official footage of the tweaked vehicles available yet, you're seeing previous versions of both cars on screen, there's a change to the gear shifter and for Pro and GTX variants, a new drivetrain. First debuted in the Volkswagen ID7, this new drivetrain promises better efficiency and up to 550 kilometers or 341 miles of range on the WLTP test cycle for the ID4. The ID5 variant, being slightly more aerodynamic, goes just a little bit further per charge. Kia held its EV day this week and at it unveiled a few new models in the form of concept cars that preview future production models. Front and centre is the EV3 concept crossover which, despite its very concept car interior, shows some significant similarities with the EV9 and upcoming EV5. There's lots of recycled and carbon neutral interior fabrics and trim, such as a mushroom derived leather the substitute, as well as the now standard two-pane digital dash that's found in all Kia EVs. There's then the Kia Concept EV4, a four-door hatchback with an attitude that's not quite a crossover but could be by the time it gets to market. Much more angular than anything else from the brand, it has a very similar interior to the Concept EV3 and like that vehicle features V2L capabilities inside and out. Both vehicles are expected to return as production vehicles with a $30,000-ish starting price very soon. Kia may have just revealed some new concepts that hint at future production models, but BMW revealed a new production car this week in the form of the iX2. Revealed alongside the gasoline X2, the iX2 is a compact sports activity coupe, or SAC, that will go on sale in many markets around the world, but is unfortunately unlikely to ever get sold in North America. And honestly, that is a shame, because those of us in North America really do need to get rid of the obsession with huge vehicles. The iX2 will come with an estimated range of around 259 to 279 miles, which is 417 to 449 kilometers on the WLTP test cycle, all from a 64.8 kilowatt hour battery pack and a dual motor 230 kilowatt drivetrain. Despite telling staff they could unionize if they wished, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is known for not being a fan of unions and has been verbally critical of the UAW strike on his own social media network X in the last month. But at Tesla's Gigafactory in Berlin, we've seen a major increase in the number of staff there joining German union IG Metal, calling out Tesla for what it claims are unsafe working conditions, insufficient staff and unrealistic production expectations. 
Tesla has rejected the claims, claiming that IG Metal was exaggerating the situation as more than 1,000 Tesla workers joined the union just last week. Tesla refuses to sign any wage agreements with said union, but did announce a rise in worker salaries at Giga Berlin this week. Kia has officially published US pricing and trim breakdowns for the upcoming EV9, as well as confirming an EPA range of up to 304 miles, 489 kilometers. The entry-level EV9 Lite rear-wheel drive with a 76.1 kWh battery pack will start from just shy of $55,000 before incentives or mandatory fees, while the range-topping GT Line all-wheel drive variant with a 99.8 kWh battery pack will retail from just shy of $74,000, again before incentives or mandatory fees. Interestingly, though, if you want the longest-range EV9, the EV9 Lite long-range rear-wheel drive, you may not have to put down as much money as you might think, with that variant getting an MSRP just shy of $60,000. We love ourselves some big battery breakthroughs on this show, and usually we're bringing you news of new EV battery breakthroughs. But this week, we've got something slightly different. Enter engineers at MIT, who have created a new supercapacitor storage system using not the latest and greatest nanotechnology, but two of the oldest construction materials known to humans concrete and carbon black. While it's early days, the research team have showed that combining concrete with water and carbon black resulted in a structure that could operate as a supercapacitor. The researchers claim that this could make it possible for concrete house foundations to become home energy storage devices capable of storing enough energy to power said home for an entire day. If you'd like us to dig deeper, let us know. Below. Chinese brand Zika, which is owned by Geely, just like Lotus, Volvo and Polestar, is readying a new sales offensive in Europe and rumours suggest it's chasing Tesla. According to multiple news sources, Zika is readying its high-end FR variant of the Zika 001 electric sedan for Europe. It, unlike other variants of the same car, has a quad motor setup and, on paper at least, has enough performance chops to go head-to-head against the Tesla Model S plant. While this is just a rumour for now, it's worth noting that Zika has officially announced a new partnership with BNP, Paribas and Arvel that will help provide financing and leasing options to new customers in Europe waiting to get behind the wheel. The new finance options will shortly be available in launch markets like the Netherlands and Sweden. As the Union of Automotive Workers strike continues into its second month and the UAW has called strike action at one of Ford's largest production facilities, the Louisville, Kentucky truck plant, some progress has been made with regards to EV production. As reported at the tail end of last week, UAW President Sean Fain announced what he called a major breakthrough with regard to GM's battery manufacturing facilities. According to Fain, all GM battery production plants in the US will be placed under UAW's master agreement, which means that all battery production for GM will be carried out by union staff. Ford, meanwhile, maintained this week that battery plants are beyond the scope of its current negotiations with the UAW, and that, I'm going to guess, is one of the reasons why the UAW called a strike at Ford's Kentucky truck plant this week. As usual, watch this space. It's official. Tesla's base Model 3 and base Model Y are now cheaper than the average price paid for a new car in the US. And that is great news for anyone who can afford to buy a new car. But as many news outlets are failing to note, the average new price of a car in the US has risen by more than 9,000 US dollars in just five years, going from $38,000 in 2018 to just about 47,000 US dollars today. And yes, both Model 3 and Model Y are eligible for US tax credits, which come 2024 will be deductible at point of purchase. But let's not kid ourselves here. Even with tax credits, super high auto loan rates and a differential between salary increases and inflation, many, many more people today can't afford to buy any type of new car. And that 
by the way, isn't a dig at just Tesla. It's an honest reflection of the reality of buying a new car today. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question for you. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you. And it includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can sign up with, and of course, how to get clean carbon zero energy at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. We spend what feels like a sizable amount of time fud-busting rumours, myths and misinformation on this show, sometimes from the comments section and sometimes from news organisations who really should know better. And today, we've got a doozy of a weird story that crossed our desk that doesn't add up. The tale of an EV owner in Glasgow, Scotland, who claimed his new MG ZS EV kidnapped him while he was driving home from work. Reporting from the BBC claims that the vehicle failed to respond to all inputs except steering and sat at 30 miles per hour. The owner claims he had to call his wife to then call other drivers and tell them to get out of the way, which doesn't add up, and then required police to actually bring the car to a halt. What we can't understand, though, is why the brake pedal didn't work. Usually, pressing the brake pedal cuts the power to an EV motor as a safety feature. And finally, after you've purchased the car of your dreams, it's only natural to want to do some kind of customization to make it yours. Now, that could be anything from a wrap to a new set of wheels, custom license plate to fluffy animals on the dash. The last two I'm guilty of. And some people even go as far as to add suspension tweaks to make their vehicles a little more off-road ready. And while that's something I certainly see on big pickups or 4x4s, it's something I don't think of being appropriate when it comes to vehicles designed for city life. But now, if you're a Tesla Model 3 or indeed a Tesla Model Y owner, you can buy a bolt-on lift kit for your beloved ride from Chinese company Pu Laobo. Now, I know that there have been past off-road kits for the Model Y and some of them haven't looked all that bad. This one just feels off and not in an off-road sense. No, just <laughs> please just don't. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't already switched, it's time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make that switch. And in doing so, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual. And in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge right here on this channel. It doesn't matter what he's up to because it's always a fun and entertaining watch. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.